and welcome back to uh, my knitting podcast. This is episode 35 already. And it's going to be a little bit different than usual. Uh, but first things first, thank you so much for returning. If you are a returning viewer and if you're new, I hope you like the content. Uh, I talk mainly about, about knitting. Uh, it's going to be a different episode because I'm also going to, how you say, explain a little bit how I tension my knitting work while doing color work. So how I keep the strands of yarn uh, in a continental way while knitting color work. Uh, and I wanted to do that because I had a lot of bit, a lot of bit. <laughs> okay, sorry. I had a lot of trouble finding the right uh, technique or method uh, to see how people, I say, uh, keep the tension uh, in the hands while knitting with two strands in one hand. And I just want to explain you a little bit how to do that uh, with um, different techniques, because I watched a lot of YouTube videos and now I think I had uh, have collected a little bit more information. Of course, there are Maybe there are also other ways. And if you know other ways than, other, than I'm explaining, please let me know because I'm very interested. Um, because it's quite a thing, <laughs> I think. It's quite difficult to practice that enough in the right way. Or yeah, is there a right way? And it's really, how you say, um, a different technique that you really should practice a lot before you master it. So you, uh, how you say, have to put a lot of energy inside to really know if you are doing the right thing or not. And that's also the reason why I'm wearing my chestnut cardigan. This is a pattern by Marie Wallin. I made it with British blue, blue breeds, no, British breeds. And I bought it in a yarn shop in Amsterdam. It's called The Afstop and they, how you say, they sell kits. So if you just tell them your size, you can get the amount of yarn. And while making this one and the festive yoke of Scania knits, I don't have that uh, in hand reach, uh, but uh, I will maybe put in a, a little picture. <laughs> because I was trying to, I normally knit with uh, two, so one strand in each hand while knitting color work. And I don't know, that's really slowing me down <laughs> because eventually I uh, learned myself as well to knit continental. So I, then I hold the yarn strand in my left hand instead of right because the right is the English way. And I always knitted it like that. But I also, during one fest or one cardigan that I was knitting, I... I said, made an agreement with myself that I knit uh, one row uh, English style and one row continental. So uh, swifting the yarn in right or left hand. And so I mastered actually the continental knitting. I'm actually left-handed. So even though I'm left-handed because I learned it, uh, I say right-handed, it was quite difficult to I say learn a different technique to really make different pathways in my brain. <laughs> the same with continental stranded knitting. If, I think that's the word. If, if I'm not right, please tell me. <laughs> but that's what I saw on most YouTube uh, videos about holding two strands of yarn in one hand. And I did that as well with this cardigan and the festive yoke to do one row like the way I'm used to it and uh, it, that goes well and one row uh, practicing a new technique. And eventually now <laughs> I started the Agnaskofte uh, from Viola. It's, uh, if you Google it Viola, then you come on the, the website and you can buy the, the, the patterns. But the, I bought the Norway, do you say Norway? In, Nor in the language Norway, in Norwich? No, <laughs> it's not Norwich. I don't know how you say that. In, uh, it's not Finnish, not Swedish. Is it Norwich? No, <laughs> I'm sorry. So in the, in the language of, uh, of the people 
who live in Norway. Uh, I bought the pattern by Ravelry because they have the Agnes Kofte also on Ravelry in uh, the different language. But um, I... Norwegian. Is it Norwegian? Yeah, sorry. I once I don't know how to pronounce it. I I cannot l let it go <laughs> either. It's very difficult. So after this video uh, shot, I will uh, look it up as well. I kind of lost where I was talking about, but oh yeah. Um, but uh, uh, if you would like to knit this and you're not, uh, how you say, uh, a people, f a person from Norway who talks the language or knows the language. Uh, then there's also a PDF in English of the whole book. And I could actually recommend to buy that uh, better because there are a lot of beautiful patterns in the book. And uh, yeah, this takes a lot of time to translate it. So Google Translate, of course, helped me a lot, but still it was, I don't know, a lot of thinking because it's translate different. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I I think I rather have the English pattern, and then I know that the designer also thought about how to express herself best. And yeah, I don't know. So maybe I will buy it as uh, anyway because there are still two patterns that I would love to make out of the book: uh, the Dagmar sweater I would love to make, and the there's another one. I don't know the name anymore. <laughs> But anyway, so the I will get it. That's nice. So I'm knitting this one in Raumafino. And this part is actually, uh, of course, the yoke. Uh, I did this one uh, in the, how you say, holding the strands in each hand. So knitting with two hands. And then I started with the sleeves and I thought, yeah, Marlene. <laughs> Now it's maybe the time to practice knitting color work, stranded color work, continental wise. Because I practiced it before, and uh, for some reason, I, I don't know, sometimes you just feel that the quarter is falling, we say in Dutch, the kwartje valt, that you, I say, everything falls into pieces, and then you think, yeah, now it's the right moment to really, really practice it, how you say, seriously. <laughs> so I. I don't know, for some reason, after uh, this sleeve, and now I'm on the second sleeve, and now it really feels like uh, knitting the color work with both uh, strands of yarn in one hand feels more easy than to hold uh, in each hand. So that's really, really nice. And I just wanted to record this just to, I say, encourage you that knitting is all about learning. And, and I say, keep on doing it. And even though if you make mistakes, uh, some mistakes are, I say, uh, uh, nice to have because I have one mistake here. <laughs> uh, and I think, oh, that's nice, actually. I love that. Like it's an ugly duckling uh, in the sleeve. I think it's, I don't know. I think it's cute. I will, I will keep it. But I also had another... Yeah, last night I had one mistake here or here. I don't know. And there was a very, very large brown spot. So if you decrease in this pattern, it's not that pretty uh, on the, the, the downside. So if you can see here, it's not that nice. But I thought on this part to just leave it totally uh, brown. But then I thought, yeah, that's, that, that looks really weird, <laughs> actually. That really feels like a mistake. So I didn't like that. And I last night I ripped it out again and tried it again. And now I think it's better. It's more unity that it's like brown and white. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's really, really nice. I can really recommend it. And I will show you in a minute, a minute in a, like a tutorial wise, um, video how to do it. First thing what I want to tell you as well is that I use the small circumferences Chaigu needles, the interchangeables. 
and I used the larger needle for my right hand and the smaller needle for my left hand. So because I have large hands, I really like to have the grip more in my right hand than in my left hand. Left I actually uh, hold very loosely, so that's nice, but with my right hand I want to do the picking. So yeah, I can really recommend that. So I will show you like this. So in my right hand, the taller one, left hand, the smaller one. And I bought these at um, a yarn, uh, online yarn shop, Wol uit het Zuiden, from the lady Antoinita. She's from Portugal, uh, but she lives in the Netherlands. <laughs> and she uh, sells these and I'm very, very happy with them. It's really nice because those needles, so these are the small ones, but those needles, I think sometimes I leave my project laying around and I'm always scared that the children, I don't know, hurt themselves with the needles. So I'm very happy to have these now. But that's it actually. I'm very, very happy with this project. And I will show you now uh, the tutorial, how I hold the strands of yarn in my hand. Uh, I've never done this before, so I will see you in a minute and uh, have, I hope you enjoy the tutorial. <laughs> okay, bye. So what I prefer to do is to uh, keep the yarn at each side, each of the skeins. And of course the contrast color, so the color that I want to bring forward, uh, it will be in the, the white, of course. I want to see the white more prominent than the brown. So normally I prefer this method, that I keep the yarn in each side, each strand. I don't know if you see it properly. I will do it a little bit more like this. <laughs> All the strands. So normally I keep it in each hand and I actually like to keep it very loose. So I only do it like this. And also at this side, I tend to do it a little bit more holding the yarn like that. I don't know why sometimes I do like this, but most of the times I just keep it like this in this hand. And then I would do, I say, uh, some people hold the yarn like this, uh, but I notice that while knitting with one strand in each hand that I liked it better to keep my uh, point point finger. <laughs> uh, I don't know, uh, my, uh, my uh, second finger. So index finger, right? Index. Uh, I like to do it like this. So, and then with the left like this. But then you notice that with the left hand, it's much more easier and quicker than with the right. You always have to let go and move around. And of course, it's not that difficult. How you say, it, it doesn't matter that much that you don't, uh, I say, go uh, knit quickly. Of course, that's not really the thing that you need to learn while knitting. Actually, it's better to learn that you, how you say, get relaxed by knitting. And that's, uh, how you say, that's something that's really your hobby and that gives you joy and relaxation. But for some reason, I just wanted to know how it was to do the continental stranded work. And I will show you. <laughs> so what I noticed, of course, uh, the contrast color is, is uh, the same in the left hand. So that's actually the dominant color. Most times they say the contrast color or dominant color. And I remember that because I'm left-handed. So that's my dominant hand. So that always has to be left. Because before I always forgot how to do it. And the left hand, I don't do any difference. So, but with the right yarn strand, I will do it like this. And this is for me the perfect way because then the strands, 
because this is Rauma phenol, so it's like rustic yarn and it gets tangled quite easily. Uh, but now they don't get tangled. What I notice is actually that I like it better if the uh, white color is a little bit on the knuckle. So not all the way around, because sometimes then it's the picking is a little bit difficult. So I will do it like this and I will also show you how sometimes, so I let it go a little bit more, now the yarn and the tension, sometimes they get a little bit too close to each other, the strands. I have to, I say pay attention as well to the pattern, of course, uh, but okay, it's not happening now, but sometimes they get very, very close. And then, of course, I just tell the white one, Go back a little bit, stay on that place. So it's also, I say, it's not the whole time that they listen to me, those strands of yarn. So I have to uh, put them right back where they were. And yeah, so it's also sometimes very, uh, a lot of correcting while knitting. And I noticed really that you need a lot of uh, yarn that is not too, I say, if the... There's not enough, uh, how you say, loose yarn, then the tension also differs. There's another way, which uh, I actually did in the beginning, and that's actually that you, how you say, um, uh, wait, I will have to do it, have to think how I did that. Um, yeah, so I did it a little bit, I twisted the yarn a little bit like this. And then I put it around my pinky. And then uh, put one. So, sorry, I'm not explaining this very well. But then I put my middle finger inside of the both of the strands of yarn. And then hold it like this. So it's twisted on my pinky. So it goes like this on my pinky and then underneath my ring finger. And then there's a difference that the, the white one goes underneath the middle finger and the black uh, or the brown one goes over it. But uh, this is very nice to begin with. So if you don't, it helped me a lot to begin with this uh, method. But as you can see, for now, already it's difficult to catch the brown strands so for me actually this is not really the preferred one because also do you see that the ramafino tends to how you say get get clotted to each other and then they get tangled and it's yeah but for the beginning of course then you just have to do a lot of times like this to do it again and again but for me the, in the beginning this was a perfect tension and now I noticed for me that this is the best way for me to do it. Like this. That they keep, uh, how you say, that they uh, don't uh, bother each other. I also noticed, I don't know if I saw it correctly, but I think I saw it with Kutafakika, that she does it like this. That she holds both yarns in so this index finger has the white one and the middle finger has the um, brown one. So yeah, I, I didn't try this. So this, this might look a little bit clumsy, but uh, yeah, that's the way to teach yourself different methods. This wouldn't be my preferred thing. I think I would, if I do this, I would like to uh, twist it around my pinky and then do it like this maybe to see if that help, helps yeah i don't know this this wouldn't be my preferred method <laughs> but i like it best like this yeah um i hope you i helped you a little bit with this uh information and uh, yeah i hope that you can also uh, practice uh, the the color work uh i say the continental stranded work okay bye so welcome back and I hope uh, you've had some, yeah, something, 
some inspiration or maybe yeah something how you say this you got a little bit more information about what i just explained uh, but the last thing that i wanted to tell you as well because the mayman cardigan and the Sun senna cardigan i'm knitting as well but they don't have that much progress unfortunately uh, but i also have uh, how you say a scrap yarn project i made the sweet job blanket and i have still a lot of uh, yarn from uh so i need to catch my breath <laughs> from Vilcolana pernilla so i'm instead of keeping it in a basket and never using it i thought i want to use it it's not the yarn recommended yarn for the pattern but i'm knitting the terrazzo uh, neck color for junior from petit knit and it's knitted i knitted on a 4.0 millimeter needle and that's recommended needle but not for Veolcolana Pernilla. Uh, you need to have a, a smaller needle but i thought it doesn't matter because it's going to be a show for the children and especially because they lose a lot of shawl so my youngest is now uh, in a week she will be six years old and my eldest is eight and yeah they don't really pay attention with their scarves or anything so i thought it's really nice just to uh, knit this up and i think i so when i finished with this one i'm going to add this color with it so it will be a little bit like this and then the second one i will be using these colors and then the third one so all the strands are now a complete mess i'm going to use these three and then uh, we have again three scarves uh the yarn is away <laughs> it's it's going to be used and uh, because it's 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 like an ugly uh colorway i think i think personally it's prettier just to use it in one type of color but i think this will be very nice just to have some purpose for the yarn that you can really use up things and that the children also how you say um uh um <laughs> that the children can use it as well and have uh how you say a, a little bit more uh, scarves that they uh yeah, i wanted to say that they can go uh, use a scarf carelessly but i don't agree that you should do that because it's still knitted but that is not a real problem if they lose one uh, because then we have another one yeah but i of course want to uh, learn them a little bit more about sustainability and yeah taking care of things yeah that being said, uh, this is the end of this episode. It's, I think, a shorter one than uh, usual, uh, but I'm, I'm not sure. I still have to make the tutorial, so maybe uh, there I will talk a little bit more. But um, I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, be nice to yourself and to your knitting or crochet or sewing or anything crafty work. And, uh, have a nice day, have a nice evening, and have a nice night. And hope to see you uh, in the next episode. Bye!